What's up everybody, for today's video, I'm gonna teach you why it's important to take a short exposure when you're doing long exposure photography. So for the video, I'm gonna be using this picture from Ellicala Falls in West Virginia. And I love doing long exposures because of this swirl right here in the water. And uh, one thing you'll notice though, up top, I have a lot of blurriness because the wind was blowing the leaves and trees around. And uh, that's not good if you're trying to sell your picture to stock agencies or just you know to fans of your work so what I ended up doing was taking a shorter exposure right here and if we zoom in you can see my leaves are sharp and unfortunately I captured a guy in my picture that I'm gonna have to Photoshop out as well but that's not a big deal so one thing I want to do before I bring them into Photoshop and blend them together uh, I kinda wanna make this photo a little bit uh, darker and warmer to match my long exposure and I'll just make blending a little bit easier so what I'm going to do is reduce the exposure down a little bit. I want to bring my highlights down as well. And let's warm this up. And that's starting to look pretty close. It's not perfect, but you know, as long as we're in the general area, you, you just want to get nice and close. So once you are satisfied with that, we're going to select the two photos and then go to photo, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Okay, so once you're over into Photoshop, select your images and make a copy. Um, I like to work from a copy just in case I make a mistake. And you can see I have the long exposure on top and my short exposure is underneath that. Um, I'm gonna actually turn off the uh, top exposure for now, just because on the short exposure, I, I just wanna get rid of this guy really quick and get him out of the picture. So we'll zoom in here and you can either use the clone stamp tool or you could use the healing brush. I'm gonna go with the healing brush for this and I'm gonna make it on replace. And what I'm gonna do is sample an area right next to him and just start painting over this guy's face. <laughs> you could try normal as well if um, it's not blending too good. I kind of switch back and forth Now, if the brush is too soft, you know, especially when you're working around a hard edge, like I am with this, um, you know, with this handrail, I'm going to change the hardness of the brush. I'm gonna put it at around 50%. And I'm also gonna make it a little bit smaller. What I like to do is just kind of get rid of the guy first and then go to normal. Now we can soften the brush and select an area and then just kind of move things around. And we'll switch back to replace. And just keep cloning until it looks pretty natural. Uh, and don't forget, I'm zoomed in at 600% right here. So when we're zoomed further out, it's not gonna be as noticeable. So I, I want to get in between the planks right here. So what I'll do is copy this part of a plank and just do that. Oh, I just realized there's a lady down here too. So let's get rid of her as well. That looks pretty good. All right, and now we can zoom back out and we could turn back on our long exposure layer. Now, if we toggle back and forth, you can see that they're not perfectly lined up. And that's because, you know, taking off um, the filter, you tend to knock your lens a little bit or your camera, 
and it might not be in the exact same spot. So it's very easy to fix this. Uh, select both the layers and then go to edit, auto align layers, put on auto and hit okay. Now sometimes this doesn't always work the best, but um, what I like to do is try it out and just see where it puts me. All right, so that looked like it did a really good job. If I toggle back and forth now, everything is pretty much lined up. So now what you want to do is click on the top layer and create a layer mask by clicking this icon right here. We're going to zoom in. Now you can see the layer mask is white. If we switch to black and grab our paintbrush, it will reveal the layer beneath it. So I'm going to make the size a little bit smaller. I'm going to leave the hardness on zero. And I'm just going to start painting away. So I'm going to bring the um, opacity up to, let's try 75-ish. And anywhere you have blurry leaves, you're going to want to paint away. I'm going to lower the opacity and just kind of blend it in here. I'm just going to shrink down the brush a little bit and just fine tune this in just certain spots. You want to make it look as natural as possible. I'm looking for any other uh, leaves that might be blown or blurry in this picture, but they all seem to be pretty good in, up here. It's mostly just in this back center area, um, maybe down here. All right, so that looks pretty good and it's really easy to do. And that will help you just you know improve your photography, especially if you're trying to sell your images. And what we're gonna do now is just flatten this. And if you want, we could play around uh, with the settings in Lightroom, or if you have some other type of uh, software you wanna use, like for example, I'm gonna use some Nix software. So I'm gonna go to Filter, Neat Collection, Color Effects. And one thing I'd really like to do with these waterfall pictures is add a glow. So Glamour Glow is one of my favorite things to use and um, in this Nick collection. So let's just play around with the settings here. And what I really love about the Glamour Glow is it gives that dreamy, surreal look. And it's very easy to get carried away with it. So you kind of just want to, you want to use it sparingly. 35% uh, is typically where I like to leave mine. But play around and see what works best for you. Uh, let's see, if we do add filter, uh, maybe we could try some foliage. Now this is cool, especially when the leaves start changing, um, it'll really enhance the fall foliage, but you can actually change this to a green in, you know, summertime, and it just really makes that green pop. I don't want to do too much. I'll just show you at 100%. It gets a little, you know, a little carried away there, but around 45 should be pretty good. And hit OK when you're done. All right, so what I love about doing this in Photoshop is if you think you went a little too carried away in certain spots of your photo, you could create a layer mask and just paint away some of that, you know, the areas that you want to kind of dull back down. Um, maybe on this rock it's a little too green, so I could paint some of that away just to make it nice and soft. All right, I'm just gonna leave it at that for now. And once you're satisfied, flatten your image again. And don't worry about this uh, crop, we'll fix that in Lightroom. So go to File, Save. And jump back over to Lightroom. So here's our new blended image. And we're gonna crop in a little bit since we have 
you know the edges are a little messed up from the from the alignment and if you want to do some more playing around in Lightroom you can maybe you want to intensify these this rock structure right here so what I like to do is take the clarity tool and you can see you can really make that pop um, maybe over here we could bring up the shadows a little bit and same thing we can add clarity Let's see what happens if we do it to the water yeah We also play around with the hue and make it a little more green. But yeah, and let's add a little vignette. Okay, so I'm going to stop it right there. I gave you a little sample on how I create surreal and dreamy photographs, but what I really want you guys to take away from this tutorial is being aware of your surroundings. We get tunnel vision on moving elements in our pictures, and we tend to forget the things that are also in motion that can ruin the shot. So play around with different shutter speeds to make sure everything is sharp, and then get a separate exposure for that moving element and combine them if necessary. So I hope this helped you guys out a lot. Please like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.